This is one of the most exciting MLS seasons yet. Change my mind. Tell me otherwise. Oh, who am I? I'm Adrian from Rabona TV, and no, from Rabona TV isn't my legal last name. And welcome to the MLS Review, where we look at all the highlights and lowlights from this weekend's MLS action. And to be honest with you, there weren't many lowlights this weekend. If you're new around here, then consider subscribing to help the channel out if you enjoy the content. And hey, get comfy and enjoy the ride. We start at Children's Mercy Park and I can't find the actual post, but I think that I get targeted ads from the Vancouver Whitecaps on Facebook. I mean, it makes sense. I guess I live in the general area. And on Thursday or something like that, it said, no mercy at Children's Mercy Park this Friday. <laughs> Well, they weren't wrong. Okay, let's start at the beginning for this one though. Vancouver actually had the most dangerous chance just 10 minutes in when Jordi Reyna found himself in alone on Tim Melia. But Tim Melia has been saying no all season to guys like Reyna. Not sure what that's supposed to mean for Reyna in particular, but he made the save. Three minutes later, Roger Espinosa cut the ball back to Johnny Russell, whose well-placed shot found the bottom corner in off the post there's one. Just six minutes later, Russell found the back of the net again, this time via the left flank and a nice cut in by him. Cutbacks, cut ins, we got all the cuts in this one. And SKC had all of the goals, as in the 29th minute, Jimmy Madranda hit an incredible 35 ish yard strike. I truly have no idea how far it was, I suck with that. Straight into the top corner. 3 0 after 30 minutes, and then the Whitecaps started to lose their heads. A scuffle between Johnny Russell and Kendall Waston, surprise, surprise turned into handbags for the entirety of each team and a Johnny Russell beatdown, basically. <laughs> First, Jordi Reyna grabbed him and threw him to the ground. Then Efrain Juarez put two hands into the face of Russell. The referee went to the VAR for some consultation and deemed that Reyna and Juarez deserved to be sent off. So 40 minutes into the match, the Whitecaps are down two men and three goals. Russell wasn't done with the Whitecaps just yet though, as in the first half stoppage time, he danced around a hopeless Marcel de Jong who blatantly tripped the Scotsman for a penalty, which Stefan Marinovic did well to save. In the second though, Russell had his final say on the match as he exhibited his explosive pace and keen finishing, dinking the ball over Marinovic to complete his hat trick. From there, Lobato scored and Johan Quaze added a sixth in a massive victory for the top team in the West. Johnny Russell has got to be the best signing of the offseason so far. I mean, maybe a couple of the guys from LAFC could be considered better, but Russell has five goals and two assists from eight matches played, which is pretty incredible, especially for a newbie. Speaking of some of those LAFC guys, they traveled to Montreal in what was an emotional match for Laurent Simon. I have an opinion on that trade that Montreal made in sending Simon to LAFC for Raitala and Edwards, but I won't share that here. Basically, I hate the trade, but sort of understand where the board was coming from. Mind you, seeing how much we're struggling in the center back position is making less and less sense to me as time goes on. But okay, anyways. Montreal started this match as the brighter team as Alejandro Silva's cross was punched away by Miller, but smashed in by Nacho Piatti. Just a few minutes later, Piatti danced through the LAFC back line and was hauled down by Miller. Of course, Piatti put away the resulting penalty, so two nil up after just 16 minutes. But after 23 minutes, to borrow a term from the men and blazers, the MLS script writers added a little bit of their magic and the general, Laurent Simon scored a 30 yard free kick smash into the top corner. 2-1 and game on or game off. If you're Victor Cabrera, this dude is the death of Montreal's defense, I swear, as Cabrera was caught out of position and did enough to bring down Ureña for not only a penalty, but a red card as well. Thankfully, Evan Bush is having one of his best seasons yet as he handily saved down to his right. LAFC came close again a few minutes later, but again, Evan Bush denied them, this time on Vela. Then in the 42nd minute, Piatti got the best of his former teammate Simon once again and coolly finished past Miller for his hat trick, 3-1 Montreal. He has four goals and three assists so far this season from just six appearances. But the wheels fell off hard in the second half as Phil Haber pulled one back five minutes into the second. Then just five minutes later, an LAFC corner resulted in a wacky own goal by Yuka Raitala. 3-3, what a match. But it wasn't until the 81st that LAFC took the lead, thanks to yet another example of clumsy defending from the impact. And Carlos Vela put away a penalty. Evan Bush almost saved it though, so shout out to Bush. Besides the huge mistake he made for LAFC's fifth goal, he had to put up with 18 shots. That's a lot of shots. And from those 18 shots on goal, he made 
14 saves. So another loss for Montreal. Clearly scoring isn't the problem, but the defending is. Big time. It's hard to judge Montreal because of all the injuries and suspensions they keep getting, but for fuck's sakes, be better in defense. Could really use someone like, oh, I don't know, Simon right now. And speaking of hard to judge, I almost don't even want to talk about the Houston vs. Toronto match because, again, Vanny decided to field a bunch of children in second stringers, and rightfully so. I mean, Toronto have to travel to Mexico for their CONCACAF Champions League final second leg, which is tomorrow. I mean, there were even less first teamers in this squad this week against Houston than there were last week against Colorado. So hey, you can't fault Houston for taking the opportunity to up their goal difference with a 5-1 scoreline and get an easy three points against a lot of USL standard players for Toronto. It was basically Toronto FC 2. That could come in handy towards the end of the season for Houston while making a playoff run. So hey, like I said, you can't fault them for that. That loss means that Toronto is still bottom of the East with one win and four losses, while Houston got just their second win of the season and sits in seventh place in the West. But you know as soon as the CONCACAF Champions League is up that Toronto's gonna start climbing the table real quick. Chicago versus the New York Red Bulls and this is another match in which the goalkeeper probably should have been the man of the match. Chicago traveled to Harrison, New Jersey in search of their second win of the season, as it's been a bit of a rocky start for them. And it seemed as though it could continue to be tough, as the Red Bulls were yet to lose at home coming into this match. But after 30 minutes, an attempted clearance by the Red Bulls fell straight to the laces of Alexander Katai, and his first time volley absolutely flew into the top corner. Truly a golazo. <laughs> Do people still say Golazzo? That was such a meme back in the day. New York nearly responded immediately with Royer hitting the bar shortly after kickoff and Valet hitting it just wide from the ensuing rebound. Now, I know I was hard on him at the beginning of the season and I think it was justified, but Richard Sanchez, AKA Ricardo Sanchez in my head, was absolutely incredible in this match. The amount of double saves he had to make was just wild. Well, maybe two or three double saves. As Chicago's defense proved that they really need some sorting out. I don't know if it's personnel changes or what. And in the 67th minute, Katai found himself in one-on-one -on, -one on Robles and Robles brought him down for a penalty. Now, there is some debate as to whether it should have been a red card for Robles, as the MLS did change the rules regarding last man penalties. No longer is a foul by the last man a straight red card, as it has to have been denial of a goal scoring opportunity or Dog so, for short. This foul sort of toes the line of denial of a goal scoring opportunity and just a genuine attempt to play the ball. However, looking at it over and over, Katai was definitely not going to miss that opportunity in alone behind Robles with no one there, and Robles should have been sent off in my eyes, but he wasn't, and he wasn't able to save the penalty from Nikolic either, which was his fifth goal of the season. With 10 minutes remaining, New York pulled one back, but it wasn't enough, and a relatively poor looking Chicago team upset the New York Red Bulls. Like I said, Chicago needs work in defense, but credit to them for pulling out a win in a place where no other team has been able to thus far. Ah, the Columbus crew, winless in the last three, hosted the somewhat surprised package New England Revolution, aka the team that's holding the again against his will, holding him hostage. Freeing again, man. Set him free. Anyways, this match saw New England come back twice from a goal down, as they were left behind the eight ball early on when Farrell was caught between two mines and decided to turn the ball into his own net. Then just five minutes later, the hero that New England didn't know they needed, Teal Bunbury, continued his run of good form by scoring his third of the season in his last four matches. Columbus had multiple opportunities to go a goal up throughout the half, and they did eventually when Jesse Zardes cut inside of Jalil Anibaba and slotted the ball into the far corner. He looked like a lethal striker on that play, and that was his fifth of the season. But Columbus just couldn't hold on, and despite limiting New England to just 39% possession and nine attempts total, Christian Penilla smashed home an equalizer in first half stoppage time. And that, my friends, was how this one ended. Columbus continued to have some bad luck in the second half, hitting the bar, etc., but couldn't get the winner. They are now winless in their last four matches after starting the season with three wins and a draw, aka undefeated in their first four. You know who loves a 3-2 scoreline? Orlando, as they won yet again by three goals to two at home. Well, I say yet again when in reality they have won 3-2 and 4-3 at home previously. But regardless, this time they were taking on San Jose in the California versus Florida Derby. That's not actually what it's called, but we'll go with it. The MLS loves an early goal, and this match delivered when Chris Mueller scored. And two things here. One, really well taken goal from Chris Mueller, his third of the season, as he's emerging as a great young American talent. And two, what are the commentators doing? 
Can we just bask in the cringe that these two provided us? Straight cash, homie! Straight cash, homie! Straight cash, homie! Ooh, man, that was... <laughs> but... Cash! Mueller wasn't done there, as he played a... Straight cash, homie! ...pass to Sasha Kleiston to make it 2 nil. In the second half, San Jose still hadn't turned up, and Dom Dwyer took advantage of their sleepy defense to get in alone on Tarbell, round him, and make it 3-0. He's having a fantastic start to the season, as he has scored 5 goals in just 4 appearances. That was also his 100th goal in the MLS, so big up to Dom. Modern MLS legend. But speaking of sleeping, it was Orlando's turn to take a nap late on, as from San Jose's ninth corner, they were able to peg it back to 3-1, a nice little crap goal from Florian Jungwarth. Speaking of crap goals, Justin Miram would take one at this point, as he stepped up to convert a penalty for Orlando in the 85th minute in search of his first goal of the season, but it was saved by Tarbell. Poor dude, he leads the league with the most shots without scoring a goal. Zero for 20 shots. Rough. Another corner for San Jose and another goal for Florian Jingworth, as he made the last few minutes of stoppage time a little bit butt clenchy for Orlando fans. But alas, Orlando pulled it out and got their fourth win on the trot. Dallas, along with NYCFC going into this weekend, they were one of the only undefeated teams left in this season. They welcomed a Philadelphia Union team to Toyota Stadium that was winless in its last four matches, having only won once this season on the opening day against the nine-man New England Revolution. Well. 10 men for most of the match and then down to nine in the 86. But regardless, semantics, that sort of illustrates just where this Philadelphia team is at right now. However, they did manage to hold on to a draw for a long time. And hey, if it wasn't for the heroics of Jimmy Maurer, they may have found themselves a goal up in the second half, if not for the double save by the aforementioned Maurer. But it was FC Dallas who got the breakthrough via Amaro Diaz penalty in the 64th minute as he was brought down from a corner. That was his first goal of the season, as he's had a bit of a slow start. Mind you, he hasn't been fully healthy. And his performance is always much more than just the numbers he puts up on the score sheet. 10 minutes later, Roland Lama, he's having a good season, played the ball through to Maxi Uruti, who had it all left to do, as he rounded Blake to slot the ball into the empty net. A few minutes later, Lama found Hayes all alone, but Blake came out to make a huge save. And that's how it ended. 2-0 with Dallas remaining undefeated and starting to really climb the table in the West as they currently sit in third. And can I just say that I feel so bad for Andre Blake. One could argue that he's one of the best shot stoppers in the entire league, and yet he's stuck year after year with a poor Philadelphia side, and it's oh so clear that he deserves so much more. Colorado visiting Real Salt Lake, and the Rapids were undefeated in their last four matches coming into this one, not losing since their opening day loss to New England. Well, they lost Tim Howard early, as he came out to stop a Rosnack breakaway, but was adjudged to have used his hand to block the shot outside of the box. Red card, see you later. But Colorado did well to hold off RSL for most of this match. I mean, of course, RSL dominated, as you would expect, after being a man up that early and at home, but credit to Colorado for almost seeing this thing through. But in the 82nd, a penalty was their undoing after a lengthy VAR consultation led to a penalty being awarded, and Joao Plata put it away. I mean, at that point, the match was lost anyways for Colorado, but RSL went ahead and scored two more through Krylach and Albert Rusnak. Rusnak really deserved a goal in this match. A curling free kick into the top corner? Filthy. So 3-0 RSL as they climb up into fifth place and Colorado, well, their unbeaten run was snapped. Atlanta, another team who was undefeated since their opening day loss, traveled away to face the LA Galaxy to try to knock Zlatan down a peg after his great performance against Jimmy Kimmel on Jimmy Kimmel Live. He absolutely dominated Jimmy in that segment, as you would expect. But anyways, it was Atlanta who had an opportunity to go ahead in the 18th, when Miguel Almiron was brought down in the box, but Joseph Martinez bizarro penalty smacked off of the post, no matter though, as Atlanta got their redemption just four minutes later. Following a span of 30 seconds in which they hit the bar twice, Martinez finally bundled the ball into the net. He leads the league with six goals now. Atlanta continued to dominate throughout with the better opportunities to score, and in the second half stoppage time, Romario Williams flopped, no penalty in my opinion, and Miguel Almiron converted the resulting penalty. He has four goals and four assists from seven matches played. Not really a surprising result to be honest with you, as Atlanta have proven that their biggest question mark, their defense, is a non-factor so far. Couple that with the energy, skill, and just overall fun that they seem to be having on the pitch, 
and you have the makings of a lethal team. They're just one point behind SKC and NYCFC as far as overall standings, and they have a game in hand. Seattle, still looking for that first win of the season, had the opportunity to get it against Minnesota United, who had lost last weekend to their Cascadian rivals, Portland Timbers, hmm. which was in fact their first win of the season. Huh. Interesting. Interesting why? Well, I'll tell you. It was the home side Seattle who got off the mark in the 22nd minute, as a 22 pass sequence, coincidence? Too many coincidences. Finished off with a long range blast from Gustav Svensson. That was his first for Seattle, and what a way to get it. And I apologize if you can hear the people sawing outside. God, can you, could you not? Just two minutes later, Christian Roldan's low cross rolled all the way through to Will Bruin, who continued his great form by slotting it into the bottom corner. 2-0 Seattle, and Bruin has been involved in three goals in his last two starts. The Loons did peg one back in the 66th minute, which made for some panic in CenturyLink field, I'm sure, but substitute Clint Dempsey squared for Jordi Delem in the 95th minute, or Jordi Delem in the 95th minute, to cool the nerves and make it 3-1. Seattle's first home win in the first home match that they've scored in. Crazy, eh? Three home matches, and they failed to score in the first two. And finally, we have Portland Timbers hosting NYCFC. As mentioned before, NYCFC, one of the only other teams in the league alongside FC Dallas that was undefeated going into this match, while Portland, on the other hand, was struggling at the start of the season, but found their legs last week for their first win of this campaign. And Portland set the tone early in this match as Blanco blew two opportunities, one high and one wide but made up for it in the 26th minute as his five foot seven frame leapt the highest and his looping header found the inside of the back post. One nil Portland. New York continued to dominate possession, but they mainly had it in the areas that were never a danger to Portland, such as in the midfield or hell, even in their own end as their center backs moved the ball around trying to build from the back as New York City is wont to do. And 10 minutes later, Valeri's low driven chass, remember a shot pass, chass, was tipped away by Sean Johnson, but Addy was there to tap it into the empty net to make it 2-0. In the 66th, Diego Valeri found Larry's Mabilia's head and he converted to make it 3-0. And that was the final score, and we have to give a ton of credit to Gio Savaresi, whose game plan worked to perfection. Give up possession to New York, but block all of the passing lanes. Yes, 25% possession doesn't look good for Portland, but as I said earlier, New York's possession was mainly in the midfield, in areas that were not dangerous at all for Portland. So New York suffered their first loss and Portland get their second win in a row and could be gaining some momentum here. All right, so who gets the Rabona TV MLS Player of the Week award? Well, you could look to Evan Bush who made 14 saves against LAFC, but considering his side actually lost, sort of hard to give him the award. Or you could look to Nacho Piatti who scored a hat trick, but again, his team lost. For me, the other hat trick hero of the weekend is more than deserving of the MLS Player of the Week, as SKC's Johnny Russell has been lethal all season, but really came into his own even more against Vancouver, as he showed that he's not just a quick, skilled setup man, but can also finish with some of the best of them so far. So congrats to Russell, may this award fill you with joy you've never felt before. And that is just about that for another great weekend of MLS action. There were tons of goals, a big upset, a big comeback, and a couple of hat tricks. I thank you guys once again for watching. I really appreciate it. And I am loving making these MLS videos for you. Even if it's a smaller audience, I don't care. If you enjoyed it, then do me a favor and let me know by dropping a like, subscribe if you're new, and hey, if you like Champions League football and have nobody to watch with tomorrow, then join me and the rest of my community for a watch along. We go live 10 minutes before kickoff. Okay, self-promotion over along with this video. I'm Adrian, thanks again, and bye.